there been um, other habitats? So the Aquarius reef base of the Aquarius habitat is the last remaining seafloor habitat in the world. Um, there have been about 60, a little over 60 habitats since the 1960s. The first habitat was built in 1962 by Jacques Cousteau called Concha 1 in the uh, oh, no, Caribbean. Okay. Um, sorry, the Mediterranean. The Red Sea? And, um, oh, no, no, okay. The Mediterranean. Yeah, yeah. It's the Mediterranean. Um, Concha 2 was in the Red Sea um, a, a year or two later. Right. Um, and so there was a real heyday of habitats, late 60s and 1970s. Um, and since then, the two main states have been uh, NOAA's Hydro Lab, which lasted from the late 60s to the early 80s. And then since then, uh, Aquarius took its place, much more technologically advanced, but the same basic concept. And Aquarius has been around the last 20, 25 years um, as the remaining habitat in the world. Where was the Hydro Lab? Hydro Lab was located a number of places, but primarily St. Croix. Okay. And then I noticed that you made sure you said the word on the sea floor. That's right. Is there has there been one that was suspended or something no, there, like that? There that are, you... there are um, currently I'm aware of three habitats in the world. It depends on how you count uh, what you count as a habitat because there's some other underwater structures. But the three habitats in the world are all here in Key Largo. There are there's Aquarius which is offshore, um, and there are two. Uh, at an inland lagoon here, which are great places as well. There's one called Jules Undersea Lodge, which has become a oh, okay, hotel. Yeah. And immediately next to it in the same lagoon, there is a place called Marine Lab, um, which is a, was a project by uh, midshipmen at the Naval Academy some years ago. And it is a smaller but still fully functional habitat. So that's part of Marine Resources Defense Foundation, and they have a great habitat program. All right, cool. Why, why, why do you think in like the, the 60s there was such a strong push and then it kind of tapered off. That's right. So in the 1960s, uh, and that's when saturation diving was really uh, understood, and a doctor with, with the Navy named George Bond uh, did the primary research, or led the effort to do the primary research. Um, that then led to saturation diving. Saturation diving is still extensively used, massively used, but most military and commercial operations use um, ship-based saturation facilities where there's chambers on a ship and a diving bell associated. Mm -hmm. And that's how it really got commercialized. Um, habitats still have a very important place w with marine science because uh, you want to stay in one location. Um, they also have an important place with tourism, with NASA training or other training. They also have a very important place with outreach and education because they have a cool factor that, that the saturation facilities on uh, support vessels um, such as uh, commercial oil and gas uh, vessels do not have. Um, but saturation from the early days of habitats has continued down to a thousand feet being a, a standard depth of saturation thousand. and the deepest saturation working was approximately 1700 to 1800 feet. Um, that's, wow. that's a long way down. Was that, was that for like oil uh, yeah, they're, stuff? Yeah, they're primarily saturation diving is oil and gas although there's other things such as the military has a few applications. Mm -hmm. And for example, the New York Water Authority um, does some saturation diving in some of their water intakes, uh, water transport facilities. Um, and so those are some other commercial applications. All right, cool. And in, in this um, house that we're in now, like yes, how pe people live in here? Um, we do not have people living here generally. We um, have the next door house? staff who live here. And then next door, we have bunks for up to 20 scientists or astronauts or other uh, participants. And those people are all kind of transient, kind of just popping in and then leaving. Has there been, a, has there been someone that's got the record for the uh, the long-time resident um, award? No, not really. Not really. Our, our longest staff member has been here about 18 years, but not living here, um, just living in the area. Okay. So we have a very, some very long-term staff members um, have been a little core of the program. Um, but generally, these are, these are work uh, sites. Okay, cool.